Hello, everyone, and welcome back into the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast, brought to you, as always, by the GSMC Sports Network. Hope you guys enjoyed that first segment before we get into our second one of the day here on the show. I do want to remind you yet again that if you do feel so inclined throughout the show and throughout countless others across the network, if you feel so inclined, leave a super chat, super thanks, or super sticker here in my chat, and I will read it aloud because I definitely want to hear your guys' opinions. The same goes for any other shows you may watch across the GSMC Sports Network, and that also leads into the fact that I believe you should like, follow, and subscribe if you love this show and others that you've seen across the network. Just really support the network. is greatly appreciated by all concerned as well. Without further ado, let's jump into our second segment, transitioning from a general kind of betting preview surrounding tomorrow night's game in the NFC West to a prop bets preview because this game on the offensive side of the football for both sides feels like it can be a shootout. And not for nothing, I feel that's the best way Seattle can potentially win this game. But as you can see, there are going to be a lot of players across both teams who I feel very highly about and others who might underperform. And so... Without further ado, let's jump right into it then. Let's start off with the 49ers because I didn't necessarily mention them as much as I wanted to in my first segment. I'll start off with Brock Purdy. This year has shown that those kind of rumors about him being more of a system QB might ring true, but he has now proven enough to me where I can say at least he can competently lead this Niners team without, you know, his big pieces. I think the main piece that he can't necessarily go without is Trent Williams along that offensive line because he, like, really changes both positively and negatively what this line looks like for the Niners. If he's not there, that's trouble. That's huge trouble for them on that line. But he's proven that he's been solid. And in this game, against, like I said, a banged-up Seattle defense that might not be just ready for it quite yet, Ready for them quite yet on the on the defensive side of the football, I think you'll have a big day. So I'm going to say hitting the over here, 249.5 yards and a minus 110. That's a pretty solid bet that I'm confident to take in him. I'm not going so far as to start him in my fantasies team because in Baker we trust, but Brock is still someone who I appreciate now. And it's f- kind of funny as a Seattle fan saying I appreciate someone who is my biggest rival, but he has earned my respect. Let's not forget what he's been doing with this makeshift team. He's keeping them afloat at the very least. It's not entirely his fault that the Cardinals came back on him or the Rams came back on him. It's just that, you know, I feel like their losses are becoming too many and it might catch up to them, but not in this game. Then this will be a fast, fast, fantastic game for Brock Purdy in this one. Let's go to his backfield partner, not Christian McCaffrey nowadays. It's Jordan Mason in that backfield. And as far as the run game goes for San Fran, I feel like it could be good. But for some reason, I feel like that's an area of the game plan that Seattle will want to hone in on. Taking away at least one aspect, and that probably the run game. Because, yes... A lot of the damage in terms of injuries to Seattle's defense is up front. But at the end of the day, I just feel like Jordan Mason is at least someone who you can contain a little bit better than Christian McCaffrey. Because Christian McCaffrey, you kind of have to account for him all over the field. But Jordan Mason, you know, is honed in on like wearing you down. So if you can match Jordan Mason in this game then he's going to hit the under, and that's what I expect will happen. Under 83.5 yards, minus 114 in this game for Mr. Jordan Mason. And it's not a bad thing because I still think he can add value in this game by diversifying San Fran's game script. Say if Kyle Shanahan uses him a little bit more in the receiving game, then yes, there are many more ways than you can exploit Seattle's defense, keep them on their toes. But at the end of the day, If we're taking Jordan Mason as just a pure runner kind of running back, then I don't necessarily think he'll have the best of days because Seattle will at least want to damage or hone in on one aspect of the San Fran offense that they want to attack. And so that's why I feel Jordan Mason won't perform up to par in this one. 
And then the last player I'm going to acknowledge here for the San Francisco 49ers in this one is Jawan Jennings. A kind of Jekyll and Hyde player here where you know he's very integral to how this San Fran offense operates, even with all the players they still have when they're fully healthy. But he's kind of someone who doesn't necessarily inject himself into the games. He's someone who kind of needs a quote-unquote moment to really open up his game. We saw it against the Rams when he went off for three touchdowns, and I think we're going to see it in this game where against a very, you know, down-on-its-luck Seattle secondary, he can feel like he can exploit this defense. And he's perhaps the best route runner out of all the wide receivers in their kind of makeshift group without Samuel, without, you know, even a guy like McCaffrey catching out of the backfield. He's the one who can really diagnose how to break down defenses with his route running. And so that's why Philly's going to hit the over in tonight's game and hit way over, in tomorrow night's game rather, and hit way over in that regard at 28.5 yards. And that feels like a bargain bet. So Jawan Jennings hitting the over in this one just feels like perhaps maybe even the safest bet, if you can believe it, for the San Fran offense. And that's saying something because if you would have told me that six weeks ago at the start of the season for San Francisco that Jawan Jennings could potentially have over 30 yards in one or more games, then I would have probably laughed in your face. But that is the case right now, and it's going to be the case going forward for as long as, you know, this roster on the offensive side of the ball is not healthy. So you have to take into consideration who Jawan Jennings is and what he means to this offense. Let's go over to the Seattle side of things. Because this offense, like I said, certainly has the propensity to score a lot of points. It's just that they have to play perfect football, mistake-free football, in order to do that. And this game, I feel like, can be a shootout for Seattle. And it can be a game that, hey, they potentially are in late into the fourth quarter. But at the end of the day, all these bets are contingent on, you know, whether or not the 49ers are wearing down your defense. Because we saw, it's not just about, you know, scoring more points than the Seattle offense. It's about owning the time of possession battle. That's what Detroit and New York did a great job of. With their balanced attacks, they were able to keep the Seattle offense off the field, and most importantly, wear down a defense that could not handle what they were throwing at them. And so that's what I feel like this game could be about, because all these prop bets for I have for Seattle could hit, but they just have to have the ball for longer, if you know what I mean. But starting off with Geno, he's been pretty sterling these past couple of weeks in terms of the yardage production he puts up. Yes, he hasn't had a game where he's thrown multiple touchdown passes, and that's a little bit worrying, but he still has been perhaps one of the more consistent QBs in the league. He's playing the style of offense they need to stay in games, and he's playing it to the T. And so, Geno, I feel like, in terms of over-under kind of betting, is someone who I would honestly trust going forward week by week to hit the over. And at minus 114 this week at 248.5 yards, I feel pretty confident in saying he will. And then Kenneth Walker, kind of an interesting player because we saw he was utilized very heavily in that game against Detroit, but then had only about like five touches against New York. So he certainly is someone I'm skeptical of really getting going, but he still is perhaps the best player, or most important player rather, on that Seattle offense. Because as he goes, so goes the Seattle offense. And that's a fact. And so if he doesn't have a big game, then I don't think any of these prop bets are really appealing for Seattle or for you as a better, if any betters are watching. At over 59.5 yards, though, I kind of feel like he will have bigger say in this game. It's a divisional game, and you need to stick with your guns, stick with what you know best on the offensive side of the football, and that's running the football. And the last bet 
How about an underrated one and an underrated player in the Seattle system at that? Jackson Smith and Jigba. I love this guy. I think he has the raw potential to be the wide receiver to supplant Tyler Lockett for that role. But right now, it just feels like the Seattle passing game is too kind of short and sweet to really kind of make me think that any receiver outside of, say, DK, who's really just a game changer, is going to really step up. It's all about a committee approach. We've seen so many different players on the Seattle offense catch passes this 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 season. And JSN, he's kind of been a sneaky, underrated guy, but in terms of yardage production, not necessarily. And so I'm going to say he hits the under in this one at 49.5 yards. Not saying he's a terrible player. Not saying he won't grow into his own here in Seattle. But I feel like, as of right now, what they got going in the passing game is a good thing. Distributing the wealth. And so, someone's going to have to take a hit because of it. And I see JSN as being that guy. But overall, all these profits are very interesting. Let me know what you think about them in the comments. Because there are a lot of situations I can foresee in this game. And I don't necessarily think that all of these profits will hit. But I feel like they're the best ones that I could find. Let me know what you think. But coming up on the other side of things, we are going to resume our positional ranking starting off of the wide receivers here today and the ones that I think will shine in week six. So we'll be right, so we'll be right back after this short break. Looking for your daily fix of sports talk without having to pay